guys. I'm Jasmine from Jazz Draws Art, my channel here. And today I thought I'd talk about my top 10 favorite artists and how they like inspire me and affect me. So let's get going. My first artist that I'll be talking about today is, let's see, let's start with Phil Noto, okay? Phil Noto, he is a comic book artist and he has a very unique painterly with line art that's very pre kind of style. It He does do a lot of work where he does paint. I believe he does some digital as well, of course, but uh, he does a lot of really, really nice work. He has this look about it that looks realistic. Like you can tell the kind of people he's kind of referencing it off of mixed with um, enough of his own style that it's just unique. He gives it where it has like the nice sketch kind of line work that's also crisp, neat lines, dynamic shapes, the way that things bend and move and they really feel alive. When he does it, he's really able to make it look like the character is a living, breathing person and you can tell by some of the things he's done, like he's used a few people for reference, excuse me, for his characters. Like when he does, what was it, Jean Grey? I think he used a picture reference of Zoe Deschanel and it looks really good. Um, I'll show it here if I find it. <laughs> I really was drawn to the way that he did his work because I'd seen some of it in comic book stores before. I just instantly fell in love with his work. I am enamored with it. I love the way he gets the expression because his work, it looks simple, but difficult to do at the same time. Like it looks like simple line work with like beautiful rendering in color and in shading and in value, but he does so much and it looks like he doesn't even use all that much to do it, you know? And so I just, I really, really love the way he's able to make a mix of it and make it his own and make it look realistic and lifelike while still maintaining the fact that he has like his own unique thing. I sound like I don't know what I'm talking about. But trust me, when you look at his stuff, it is just gorgeous. I am, I, I hope to be some fraction of this. I do not, do not want to copy him and his style because as much as I'd love to have a style like that, I just respect him too much to try and just flat out, you know, copy what he does. So I'm trying to give him a little space here and show him, you know, I want to incorporate some of those things into my own art, which is why I try and work in line art like that. Although he does it much easier than I do. <laughs> um, he does beautiful work though. Number two is Alex Ross. Now he is the king. <laughs> I don't care who you are. He is the king of comic book art. I, oh, you'll be hard pressed to find somebody who can do comic book art the way he does. There's a reason why he's like the most in demand, the most like praised, absolutely adored comic book artist and looked up to by many, 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 many artists, including myself. I remember uh, seeing his work when he did the artwork for the opening credits of Spider-Man 2, Tobey Maguire Spider-Man, which by the way, the Raimi trilogy is my favorite, Spider-Man, my favorite movies all together. <laughs> but I remember seeing that and being like, wow, the artist is insane. And then when I heard his name again later in life, I'm like, oh, Alex Ross. And then I looked it up. I was so excited to finally like see like, oh, that's who did it. This guy makes art that looks like, the only way I can try to describe it is like the old promo posters that they used to have 
uh, in older times. I don't know what era they'd be considered like 50s, 40s, don't quote me on that. But, you know, more old timey kind of era where it's super painted and has this super unique older fashion style that posters used to have. And he literally does paint them. He does like, I'm sure he does digital work too. Um, sometimes it's hard to tell because he can make it look pretty darn realistic, but he does the most insane, mind-blowing work that I think <laughs> I've ever seen. And what I take away from him and the way he inspires me is we'll flat out put in the effort and make it look great. Now, I don't always do that because I also have a hard time knowing when it's right to stop because you gotta know when it's right to stop. Otherwise, you're just kind of screwing around with your work here. Yeah, okay. Walt Disney. I didn't say all of these were gonna be comic book artists, okay? Now, Walt Disney, I have read uh, multiple books about him and I've watched many documentaries and movies and series and things about him and he is just the stuff that he went through whether you love him or hate him your opinions are your opinions but uh, let's keep everything nice if you don't like him it's okay just let's not get mean in the comments all right walt disney he he always knew what he wanted to do and he was a little bit scared to follow it when he was younger, but he knew that that was the one thing for him. And that's something about not necessarily his art, but about him as a person that I just, I really resonate with where like, you know, I don't think there's anything I'd rather be doing, even if this is really hard for me to do. I just don't think I could do it the same way, you know? I couldn't do anything else with as much passion and love and appreciation and patience, discipline, anything. I don't think I could do anything without being as much as he is. I absolutely love this stuff. He came up with his own style, he came up with his own idea for characters, and he went with it. And yes, he got a lot of people involved, and he would sometimes be homeless or, you know, just completely flat out broke and have to, you know, scrimp and save and do whatever he could to survive, but he pushed on and he had so many ideas and so many things that he wanted to do with his life. And with his stuff that he ended up making, you know, theme parks and rides and shows and movies and bringing stories to life for children and families alike, to just watch and be in awe of and he, he went with it no matter how many hard times, no matter how many bumps in the road, no matter how many times he got set back and he got set back <laughs> so much, you wouldn't believe it, so much and he kept going and I myself, even though I've, I've been able to keep going, I have felt like a million times in my life like falling apart and giving up on art and just that's it the end I can't do this anymore I shouldn't try but some little voice in my head tells me that you know this is the only thing I can see myself actually doing for my life not even necessarily as a living although that's the whole Mostly because I would like to live off of what I want to do for a living, but um, well, what I do for my life. But he has shown me that you know you don't need to necessarily make money to be successful at what you love. You make it because you love it, and you can hope that other people will like it too and enjoy it. And bring them that little bit of magic that you feel with your stuff. And that's so what I want to do with my things, with my comic and with my work, my art in general. But I just, I absolutely love 
his mindset towards that, like, you know what, this is the only thing for me, and I know it, and I'm not going to stop. You can never actually fail if you never give up. Even if you don't make it to your exact end result, you're never going to get there if you quit. And I don't care how cheesy that sounds, it's true. And there's probably going to be a million more turns where I'm going to feel like, you know what, this isn't worth it anymore, I can't do it, it sucks, life sucks, I hate this. I will always come back to art. Art is the only thing I've ever known since I was a kid that I can put my time down and just, you know, sit and improve. There's a lot of things you want to learn in life. I mean, of course, you know, I'd like to be able to learn more languages. I'd like to be able to do a lot of things. But nothing in my life will ever be bigger to me than art. Creating, making things. It's my life's passion. Take it or leave it. Okay, and that's how he inspired me. Never give up, keep going, and plus, I do love his characters, especially Goofy. I love Goofy so much. <laughs> but, uh, you can't see it, but my... Not my lampshade, my light cover is Disney, and so is my light switch back is Baby Disney. And that was here in my parents moved in, so. Absolutely adorable. Love it. Let's keep going. Who's next? Okay, number four. Glenn Keane, who works for Disney, okay? His stuff. If you don't recognize his stuff, go back and look. He does stuff like Rapunzel. I believe he did Little Mermaid. His stuff has been a lot of the modern Disney look. And while I love the original, I love the original style, his stuff is just... Mm, it hits just right, you know, the big, big eyes and the little noses, and people can pick on that about body positivity, it's all up to you, but as an artist who just sees it as stylization, not as anything else, it's stylization, I think it's absolutely gorgeous, he makes it so lifelike, but it's so cartoony at the same time, so it's kind of like bringing in that feeling that you felt when you would watch a Disney movie originally, and you get to see that beautiful style. I love the way that it just emanates, you know, life and excitement and you can tell all the emotions by, like, yeah, there's body language and stuff, but you just he makes it look so bouncy and everything, and that's kind of the style that really drew me to wanting to work for Disney, possibly, someday. And I love it. He's gorgeous. His work inspired me a lot. I remember the way that I was trying to create my own style was I always wanted a mix of, like, not quite cartoony, but, you know, very stylized with a bit of realism. Just enough to make it, you know, look like people, so I could draw without necessarily having to do realism 100% of the time, or coming up with my own 100% original cartoony thing going on. And so I remember taking bits and pieces of things that I learned from how they crafted the shapes for like the heads, the eyes, how they, how they built a face and a body and anatomy. The way that he did it, really inspired me and so I loved the way that hair was rendered and I loved the way that he would do things like the way he did it was a lot of his stuff is just you can see how they craft the personality when they're doing like character concept art and sketches um, I especially love Rapunzel because it's like she looks like me but with just a little bit more tan skin, green eyes, and blonde hair. So if you change the colors a little bit, she looks so much like me if I were a Disney character, although I love Belle so much. Um, with the long hair and everything, I just absolutely love the way he did that. Next is Steve Ditko. 
Now Steve Ditko is the one who helped design and work on the original Spider-Man and he worked for Marvel back in the day, you know, with Stan Lee and the bullpen and all that. It was a glorious time. While Jack Kirby, who is another artist I look up to a lot, was um, often the one that worked with Stan and made a lot of comics with Stan and characters and designs and the way he did things. Steve Ditko just had a different feel that Stan was looking for at the time for the kind of character he was thinking of and what he ended up coming up with was incredible. I, of course, am biased because Spider-Man is my favorite character for anything, for fictional, ever, like, <laughs> to ever exist. He had a nice, bold look to his stuff, and it was very dynamic. Um, the way that he was able to draw, like, the action scenes and how Spider-Man would swing and the way his eyes would look and how he thought about the webs, it was very well put together. Um, and I appreciate all the work that he did on everything and his ideas that went towards making Spider-Man work and the other characters he worked on. I just absolutely love it. I really do look up to him in how I approach because he made it where Spider-Man looks, you know, because it's it looks kind of busy because of the webbing design on him, but it's just enough detail that he doesn't have like a generic superhero look. He's simple enough that it's not like wow that guy's crazy like his design is overloading the senses he really made it you know look whoa <laughs> how how do you do that like he's eye-catching he made spider-man like his suit very eye-catching and he made peter look you know quite the nerdy teenage boy which he should because that's how he's meant to look but it really affected me the way that he did it and he was like you know one of the first guys to influence me in that way because of course once i started loving spider-man i had pictures of him in books and everything everywhere like i could not get enough of this man and his work so <laughs> Thank you, Steve Ditko. Jack Kirby. Jack Kirby is next on the list, yes. I do also really love the way Jack Kirby, he is an inspiration. Truly a trendsetter for all comic book artists and readers to look up to. He helped do things like the Fantastic Four and many, many others while working in his time in comics he made awesome work another thing he did is that he had like the old style kind of like steve ditko and i love the way that you know he was able to bring these characters you know into action for the first time to make those characters that everyone has come to love know and love so much into who they are today like fantastic four i know i keep bringing that up but that's like the biggest one I absolutely love the Fantastic Four. Um, I love a lot of Marvel stuff. I'm not gonna lie to you. I do. I love it a lot. He was a machine. This man worked on so many projects for so long and he just kept going. He never stopped creating new things and to have to do all that and on the fly and get things ready to go and to print and what a guy. What a guy. All right. Moving on, Terry Dodson. I'm sure a lot of you comic book fans know, but if you don't, if you're not into comic books this way, it's okay. I will let you know. He has come up as a, one of the great comic book artists of our time as well. He does a lot of awesome work. Um, I, of course, know a lot of people because if they draw Spider-Man or not, but He's worked on many different series and projects, and he's done a lot of work. You've probably seen it if you've ever looked up comic book stuff or characters or whatever online. He's very big, <laughs> very awesome artist, and I highly recommend you look him up if you haven't. 
I really like the way he does his line art, but like the way he does his line art and his colors are so vivid. Just really good sense of line weight and movement when he draws, which I have a hard time making things look not quite so stiff. Mind you, I'm still always learning and I uh, love the way that his work comes out. It just looks stunning every time. I'm always excited to see his work, like always. Now he goes by, I don't know if you like read out the acronym because he has a long name, but uh, Cafu Comics or C-A-F-U. I follow him on all his social media. Um, I love this man's work and also he is so nice you guys so nice um, whenever I comment on his work he likes my comment and he responds and says thank you or says something nice and it's just it's so refreshing like his work is just so crisp the way he does values and shading and lighting and bounce lighting and reflecting and texture and the way he does his layouts, his composition, all of it. I cannot find a flaw in it. I love all of his work. It, I get, literally, I get so excited whenever I see his stuff and I look at it for like a good 10 minutes at least every time he does that. I also look at it to pump myself up to get myself to actually do my comic book artwork when I need to. But uh, yes, if you haven't looked at his stuff, I highly recommend it. I I love it so much. The way I want to learn from him, he inspires me, is that, again, all of his things just look seemingly so perfectly well done and executed extremely well, and he makes it look very professional, very nice, uh, like, determination of where things go what will complement it, and all of that. All of that is executed very well. Todd Nock. I hope that's how you pronounce his last name. N-A-U-C. Everybody loves him. I'm sorry. It's true. Everybody loves this guy because he makes it look so good whenever he does his work. It's very much more stylized than other things that I like, but it has that nice comic booky look without being like overly revealing all the time. But he does a good job at mixing um, anatomy. Like he has his own exaggerations on how anatomy should look and he makes it look very cool the way he does it. He has it so it looks incorporated with like you know he can have the tiny waist and small rib cage but with the big rounded hips and the very slender really long legs and he can have like the face is very stylized and the head shape and the hands and the way they bend and the way that limbs bend has an extra little curvature to it i just really admire his work also he is a hilarious man and he truly is, like I say, one of us. You just know from the instant that you look at their work, whose it is. And like, that's a very hard thing to do because often comic book artists, while they all have like their own ambitions and their own work and comics and things that they do, it's hard to make sure that uh, people know wh whose is whose because often a lot of them have a similar style. like the comic book art style and you can see what I mean by this if you just end up typing up comic book art you'll see like the old-fashioned style comic book art that looks a lot like the same even though they're different artists and you're gonna get a lot of different people doing things now where they all have like the really heavy lashed eyes like eyes for comic book women and the way they do proportions and the way the body is and the way that things are colored and laid out 
you know, just, it can all blend together, but to have your own style that just looks so distinctive from everyone else's and you know it's their style, it's not like a rip off of anyone else's, 100% theirs alone. Last artist, <laughs> Bob Ross. No, this is not a joke, even though I'm laughing. Because after all the other people I mentioned, it just sounds weird to put his name amongst theirs. But Bob Ross, his whole, you know, happy accident thing, it really does get you through working because how many times have I been working on a piece and I put something in that I hadn't originally attended, intended it to have, or let's say... I accidentally turned on a filter for or used a certain brush I didn't mean to that has a certain texture or something. Colors are different and I find out, hey, actually, that looks better than what I was expecting with my other thing I planned to do. And so happy little accidents are true, you guys. Happy, li uh, happy little accidents happen all the time. It's more of a life lesson I learned from Bob Ross, although his work is very beautiful and I do really like it a lot and I have followed many a tutorial from that man. Um, he is very sweet and I do really appreciate him and his stuff that he did. It just makes me happy to watch his work so I'm happy that his things exist. But yeah, I, I really do love Bob Ross and his work. Ah, what? Good night. Thanks for making me suffer. Uh-huh.